I'm really excited to talk about the Tinico A11 Hero. And this is a really cool cordless vacuum. You kind of hold it kind of like a gun. It's really fun to use it in that kind of way. Now, one of the main questions I had prior to buying this vacuum was, should I go out and spend a lot of money and buy a brand name Dyson series? Or should I save money and take a gamble on this Tinico? Because I didn't really hear much about this. There are a lot of reviews, but I don't trust those reviews because sometimes they send them free products and they're kind of incentivized. So I thought I went out and try out this product. So let's go right into it. <laughs> Now there are two versions, there's the A11 Hero and there's the A11 Master. And the Master comes with a few more accessories and I'll cover what the differences are and let you decide what is the best purchase to make based on your circumstances. But first let's talk about what is actually in the A11 Hero. So the main thing is the cordless vacuum in itself and that is a 450 watt digital motor and it's five times more powerful than an ordinary DC cordless vacuum. So that's really impressive. The A10 Master, so the, the A10 series, is only four times as powerful. So depending on your use case, and I'll let you guys know if it's actually worth the actual uh, horsepower. Then it comes with an extension tube, which is the main tube you'll use to attach other accessories. It also comes with an LED multitasker power brush tool, which can be used on all floor types, such as hardwood flooring and carpet. It works pretty well. Then it comes with a mini power brush, which is similar to the main multi-purpose roller brush head, but it's a lot smaller and more nimble. So one distinction between the A10 and the A11 series is that both A11 series come with a rinse-free filter cleaning tool. So this is kind of, kind of an ingenious way of cleaning filters, and I'll kind of cover that later in the review, but this is what's something that the A10 does not have. Another difference between the A10 and the A11 is that this comes with two batteries by default. If you get the A10 series, you'll need to upgrade to the, from the Hero to the Master series to get two batteries. And also cover whether you need two batteries at all. One of my favorite tools it includes is a crevice tool. And this is actually one, one of my favorite tools and something that was lacking in my previous vacuum. Lastly, there's a cleaning tool to just cut the hair out of the roller. And it's just a little brush to clean little things. I don't really use this tool that often. Another tool that I don't use that often is the dust brusher. It's a two-in-one tool. This can be used on furniture that has like a lot of dust on it. Or you can use it on your curtains if you want to clean the dust off that. But I don't really use this one too much. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the build quality and the look. And when I first opened the box and I took out the vacuum, I was really impressed with how it looked. It has this really cool blue transparent type of color, kind of reminiscent of the earlier Max, kind of the G3 Mac of the blue color. So not only does the transparent design look cool, it's also very practical because you can actually see all the dirt that's inside your vacuum and it can prompt you to clean it more often. So there's actually some practicality to this transparent design. It's not only cool, I like looking I like looking into the gadgets and seeing the internal guts of my vacuum. It looks really cool, but it's also nice to see all the hair and all the dust and all the dirt that's inside. And it reminds me, okay, you should clean your vacuum. Now, one little nitpick with the build quality is that this does feel like the plastic isn't, doesn't feel as sturdy as I would hope for it to be. And I'm not sure if this dropped from a, like, if you're trying to stand this upright and it kind of just fell, whether it would survive such a, such a fall. So I would be very careful on how you place this because this isn't like a typical kind of broom vacuum or like an upright vacuum that can just stand on its own. I actually had, my previous vacuum was the Hoover Lynx vacuum and that was a vacuum that could just stand, stand alone by itself. This one, if you kind of try to stand it, it will, might, it will fall. So just be careful of that. So far, I haven't had any issues with the build quality and I'll definitely post a comment down below if there any anything bad happens to my vacuum. So definitely stay subscribed to this video and I'll definitely post more updates in the future. Now the next important topic is power and by that I mean suction power of this. Can this actually pick up dirt? Can this actually cleanse your carpet? Well I ha I'm really happy to say that the 450 watt digital motor is actually pretty damn powerful and it also has it has a normal mode, which is actually quite quiet, but it has a max mode. And that, wow, the suction power. <laughs> Sometimes it's not practical to use when uh, the max mode. I find the max mode more practical to use when you use the crevice tool to pick up dust. But yes, the power is actually quite amazing. And in order to maintain that power, it's recommended that you try to clean your filter ever so often so that you get the best suction power. 
So as I mentioned previously in the normal mode, I'm actually really impressed of how quiet this vacuum actually is. It doesn't really bother me and it's really great because you can vacuum really late at night, let's say at midnight, and your neighbors won't really hear you. If you set it to max mode, it, is, it does get pretty loud and I like to use you know, construction earmuffs to kind of avoid the high-pitched squealing. But honestly, it's, I don't use it that often. I use normal mode most of the time and the suction power in normal mode is more than enough. So for the next few topics, I'm gonna to discuss how it feels to use this actual vacuum as a cordless vacuum. Secondly, I wanna talk about how you can interchange between all the accessories, and then storage is also another important aspect. And lastly, obviously, it's cleaning. And no one likes to do cleaning, but we need to talk about how, how good or bad the cleaning is. So let's jump into the next set of topics. So first of all, thank thankfully, this is a cordless vacuum, so the convenience factor is really high when using this vacuum. I really will never ever go back to corded vacuums. I think it's a real hassle, and I definitely think it's the worth the premium to upgrade to any type of cordless vacuum. Now, when I'm holding the vacuum, it feels really good in the hand because it has a really large grip. And then there's a trigger, and that trigger, you know, you're supposed to use it only when you're actually vacuuming so you can conserve battery. And I'll get to battery later, a little bit later. But what's really nice is that they include a lock for the trigger. So you can lock the trigger and it'll just continuously vacuum and you don't have to hold it. And for me, this is what I use all the time because it's kind of annoying to hold the trigger all the time. And I believe with the Dyson series, you don't have the option to do that. You have to use the trigger, which I really, I would really hate that. Thank God that this, this vacuum doesn't have that type of thing. Now, in terms of the weight, it is pretty heavy, especially with the battery. This is a larger battery, battery capacity compared to the A10. The A10 is a little more lighter, so if you really care about that, maybe go with that. But honestly, when I'm just kind of rolling it, all, most of the weight is just distributed on top of the roller, so I don't really feel that much kind of heaviness. It's only when I lift the device, such as when I'm using it in a handheld mode, and maybe I'm cleaning some like tall curtains or like cleaning the ceilings, it gets, it's a little heavy, but honestly, it's not really a big deal and the weight is totally fine. Now, both the A10 and A11 series of Tineco vacuums both have an LED multi-purpose roller brush. And wow, the LED lights as you vacuum that shine on your floor really does show all the dirt, the hair, and all the crap that's on your floor. And it really is, it really makes it satisfying to vacuum. So this is one of the coolest features that I think all vacuum manufacturers should add. They should just add an LED light to the bottom uh, of the roller so that you can see all the dirt. And I do recommend when you're vacuuming to kind of dim the lights so you get the full added effect of sucking up all the dirt and grime off your floor. It feels really satisfying and it's very, it's kind of strange, but this is actually one of the coolest features of this cordless vacuum. So the next thing I wanna talk about is switching between all the accessories that this vacuum comes with. And to me, this is an amazing feature. I am so happy to upgrade from just a traditional vacuum. I was using the Hoover Lynx cordless vacuum and all it did was just kind of have the main kind of roller and it would just vacuum, that, that was all it did. It didn't have any crevice tools, it didn't have any extension tubes or all that kind of stuff. And it couldn't be used as a handheld device. And let me tell you, I am so happy using this Tineco A11 Hero as a handheld device because if I have a little spill in the kitchen, let's say I spilled a whole bunch of coffee beans, I don't, I don't have to sweep it up, I can just suck it all up and it's very satisfying. And thankfully, the A11 Hero comes with a myriad of tools to cover any kind of different scenario that you want to vacuum. So for example, one of my favorite tools and one of the ones that I use the most is the crevice tool. And that can allow me to kind of get into the corners of my, of my walls and of my floor and suck up all the dust bunnies in between that. I can get really deep, I can go in between like couches or I can go really high and kind of get all like the ceiling out of a fan. It's just really nice. It's really great to have a crevice tool. To me, that was one of the main accessories that was missing from my previous vacuum, and I'm so happy to have it. Now, if you use the crevice tool in handheld mode, I can imagine that using all these type of, let's say, the mini brush and the crevice tool in a car can be very handy because you don't have to bring a cable. You can just kind of spot clean in your car. That makes your experience of cleaning cars really fun. Another accessory they include is a motorized mini brush, which is kind of similar to the main multi-purpose power brush tool except that it's obviously half the size. And this is really cool to do some spot cleaning, especially in a handheld mode. Or if you have, you wanna use it with the extension tube and you kind of have a smaller type of vacuum to get into smaller places. So it's really cool that they include two motorized brushes. So the next thing I wanna talk about, and it's very important, it's cleaning and the maintenance of your cordless vacuum. Now, no one likes to clean, it's really dirty. I hate having dust all over 
kind of exploding in front of my face. I like to wear a mask sometimes, but cleaning is essential to make sure that you get the most power, the most suction out of your cordless vacuum. So with that in mind, I wanna go over the cleaning process and explain how hard or how easy it is to clean and maintain this vacuum. So I'll say overall that the cleaning experience for this vacuum has been actually pretty positive. Now emptying the main dustbin, which is the thing you'll be doing the most, is actually very satisfying. You kind of just hold the vacuum over the over your garbage, press the button, and what will happen, it will eject all the dirt from the bottom. And it was actually a really ingenious design. I think they copied it from Dyson. And to me, that has been actually very satisfying to see all the dirt kind of eject and kind of like pop out out of the uh, out of the base of the vacuum. So that was a really good experience. So with the dustbin, it's actually 0.2 liters bigger than the A10. So the A10 has a 0.4 liter dustbin. This A11 series has a 0.6 liter, and it's actually really big. So you can hold a lot of dirt in there, but I might as well just every, between every session, just dump out all the dirt. I don't wanna hold it in there and kind of reduce the suction power of this vacuum as I use it. So one thing you can do is completely detach the dustbin and you can run it through cold water and you can clean it out and so it looks really nice all the time. That's something I don't do because it's a lot of work. I'd rather just open it up and just eject all the dirt. So moving on to the filters, there are two types of filters. One is a HEPA filter, which is at the top, which is very easy to clean. All you gotta do is kind of unlock it, remove it, and then just wash it underwater. That one I'd find I don't have to clean that often. So it's really, it's really not that much of an inconvenience to clean it. And then secondly, there's the fine filter. So the filter that actually sits embedded in the dustbin. And that you can just simply, you know, obviously open the dustbin, remove it. But here's the thing, with the A11 series, it comes with a special pre-cleaning tool that the A10 doesn't have. And inside that tool actually has a clean filter. You'll take that clean fil filter and you'll place the dirty one inside the dustbin. You're gonna remove the pre-filter, so the fine filter, and you're gonna put it in this kind of tool and what this tool has is actually it has a brush and this tool connects to the main vacuum and then what you'll do is you'll set your vacuum to max and you'll kind of just you know lock the trigger and it'll start sucking and it'll suck all the fine dirt from that dirty filter and what you'll do is you'll rotate the brush inside the, the filter tool so that it kind of shakes out or extracts all the dirt from it. You end up kind of loosening all the dirt from the filter. This makes it easier to clean your filters without having to run it through water and then dry it for 24 hours. This is actually a really cool upgrade from the A10 series. You actually get this nice little tool that kind of cleans your filters. So thanks to the transparent design of this vacuum, you'll know when you have to clean your vacuum. So it's very easy to spot when your filter is kind of clogged up. That's really nice. And I find that cleaning in general is not so bad. There, it sounds like a lot of steps, but it's actually really easy. And they've given you these tools and accessories to easily clean your filters. So kudos to Tinico for giving us a vacuum that's very easy to clean. So let's talk about the battery. And right off the bat, I'm gonna say that just one single battery is more than sufficient for my apartment. Now I do live in a small apartment and I kinda, I don't clean the entire apartment, but I find that one battery can do the entire job even when using the max mode. So if I've actually never used the second battery, and so what I've done is I've set that battery to kind of like 60% or 70%. I think that's what they want to do. And since this is a lithium ion battery, by setting it that, it preserves the most kind of length or the health of that battery for long, prolonged storage. So I don't use a second battery at all. I stowed it away and kind of just don't really need it. I just use one battery and it's more than sufficient. So if you have a big house, I'm sure two batteries will cover the entire house. And what's great is that it comes with a very ingenious kind of storage mechanism, which I will get to in detail, this storage mechanism actually allows you to charge both batteries simultaneously. So you'll never run out of battery. So the last category I wanna talk about for this cordless vacuum is storage. And what Tinico has done is they've done something a little special and very different from what Dyson typically does. So with Dyson is that they ask you to drill holes into your wall so that you can you know, put your mount on there. And this mount is really ingenious, it's really cool because your vacuum is always charged and it takes up very little space because it's occupying a vertical space. With Tinico, what they've opted for is kind of a floor storage. And this has pros and cons. So one nice thing about this kind of storage option is that it houses almost all your accessories. Your kind of main, cane main brush, your, the tube, the cleaning tools, the main vacuum, the two batteries, all that stuff is there. Uh, pretty much everything is m m mounted on the storage option. However, the, the mini 
power brush is not mounted. So that's really unfortunate. I don't know where I'm gonna put that. It's kind of just kind of awkward. It's just kind of like the ugly ducking of all the accessories. It doesn't fit in the storage, so it doesn't fit like as a family. So I do appreciate that I can mount almost all my accessories into the storage unit that sits on the floor. Now, since it sits on the floor, it doesn't require you to drill holes into your wall, which can be kind of daunting, especially for someone like me. I don't want to like break my dry wood wall or I don't have any power drills. I don't, I don't want to do all that stuff. So for me, I'm kind of happy that they kind of just force you to kind of keep this on the floor. But obviously this, you know, there's some cons to that. One thing I want to note about the storage option that's really cool is that the battery that's attached to the main vacuum is also is always charged and then there's actually a spare battery holder that also that also charges that battery so you will never run out of batteries as i mentioned before so with this different storage option there are some cons to it and one is just the grab and go factor with dyson if you can get that mounted you're a handy person you can mount this uh, the mount onto your wall you can just grab it and go and it's you'll never have to like kind of worry about charging or like kind of putting the pieces together. With this storage option, you always have to disconnect the main tube and the main roller from the main vacuum because that's how it's stored. You can't really just have it all connected in one piece. So what ends up happening is that I have to bend down from the floor and to pick up my vacuum and then connect the tube. So this is kind of a two-step process. Now, if you have an equal chance of using any accessory, this is a good thing because Maybe on this day you'll use the main roller, but this day, this other day you'll do a spot cleaning with the crevice tool. So I, I don't know if this is actually a really a con. It really depends on your kind of preference for vacuuming. I'll be honest though, it does kind of prevent me from vacuuming sometimes because I have to kind of bend down, pick up the vacuum, and it kind of hurts my lower back. And then I have to connect the tube. Now I know that this may sound crazy and like very much of a nitpick, but these little things, these little types of frictions do prevent you from in fully enjoying your cordless vacuum. But I can live with it because I don't want to mount any mount onto my wall. It's, I don't want to drill any holes. So this is totally fine. Another downside to this approach of storage is that it occupies more uh, floor space, which is more precious in a small, like kind of small apartment. Whereas the Dyson obviously occupies vertical space. So Dyson is more space saving, whereas this one does occupy more space. So in the end, I hope this information has helped you decide what you want to do. Do you want to go for a Dyson or do you want to go for a Tineco? And amongst those, which versions are you going to get? Are you going to get the A10 or the A11? Are you going to get the Hero or the Master? Personally, for me, I'm very happy with my choice of the A A11 Hero. I don't need the Master. The Master comes with like extra long crevice tools, kind of like a hose that's like flexible. I found that all the accessories provided in the A11 Hero are more than sufficient for all my use cases. And I'm just very happy to have accessories in general. Now, in terms of picking this between a Tineco and a Dyson, both come with a two year warranty. So I think you're both kind of covered there in terms of the kind of the repair and all the, the maintenance. I, I'm i actually very happy with picking with the Tineco at this point. I think that the Dyson is kind of overpriced. You're kind of paying for a premium brand. And if you're really into that kind of kind of like the brand name, then obviously, you know, maybe you want to go for the Dyson, but I think that the Tineco is very practical and it offers all the features that the Dyson does. In fact, I think it offers a little more features when compared to the same price point. So in conclusion, I'm really, really happy with my choice of picking the Tineco A11 Hero. I really like that it has a really cool design. It's the cool blue transparent design. I really like that I can have it as a handheld device, but also have it very, have a long crevice tool to like do all these types of different scenarios. All the accessories are very helpful. I love the battery, the storage, everything is just working really great. And obviously the suction power and how quiet it is when I'm using it. And of course the LED light, all these features really make it a really compelling product. And especially for, you know, one of the best cordless vacuums I've ever used in my entire life. So anyways, I hope really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Please do give a like, it really helps out the channel and subscribe for more tech reviews. I'll see you in the next video.